Okay, so now that we've talked about the functions of the nervous system, we need to know, we need to discuss a little bit about how neurons work. Okay, we know what neurons do, their job is to send signals. Well, how does this actually happen? And so for the next couple of lectures, we're going to focus on neurophysiology. Okay, now these are the five things that we're going to go through over these next uh, six or seven slides. Okay, really what it comes down to in order for a neuron to send a signal, um, to let some part of the body do something like muscle contract a muscle or to not do something um, it comes down to the movement of ions in and out of the neuron that's really what it comes down to okay and so this leads us to permeability okay permeability is the ability for something to pass through the cell membrane okay so here we've got banker's life field house and i think it holds around eighteen thousand people now let's just say that there's one door and eighteen thousand people waiting to get in to see the lakers play the pacers in game seven of the nba finals okay if there's only one door that's open all eighteen thousand people would be able to get in it was it will just take a very very long time now contrast that with, let's say we've got 18,000 people waiting outside, but we've got 18,000 doors. And so when that, those doors open, everybody can get in and they can get in very quickly because the permeability has increased. And so when you think of permeability, one way to look at it is just the number of doors. If I have high permeability, that means that there's more doors that are open. Okay. But with permeability, generally speaking, it's what we call selective permeability. Or in other words, only specific things can cross the membrane. And oftentimes, there's only specific times which these specific things, specific ions, um, can cross the membrane. So an example of this that we'll talk about a little bit more is that sodium can go through sodium channels, but potassium can't go through a sodium channel. Um, I, it reminds me a little bit of a toy that I actually used to have when I was a kid and that um, some of my kids have had. Um, it's this, like... Uh, hexagon three-dimensional hexagon and on each side of the hexagon there was like a different shape so there's like a star and a square and a triangle okay and so you just put the blocks through right so it's to help with coordination for little kids well the star will only go through the star opening it won't go through the triangle the rectangle or that sort of thing and so you could say that that toy has selective permeability it only lets specific shapes through in specific places, right? And only in certain places. Like each shape will only go through in one spot. It won't go through, they won't go through in every spot, every opening. When we talk about the nervous system, there's three ions and really there's two that we're going to focus on. Okay. And so those two that we're going to focus on are potassium and sodium. Now, both potassium and sodium are positive ions, but what's important to know is that potassium is more concentrated on the inside sodium is more concentrated on the outside okay i'm not going to worry about you won't be quizzed on or tested on the the amount okay so there but just to see there is a lot of potassium inside the cell relative to outside but sodium is the opposite there's more sodium outside than inside okay chloride we talk about a little bit um, but not as much. Chloride's a negative ion. It's also more concentrated on the outside of the cell. Okay. And one thing to remember is that wherever there's sodium, there's usually chloride. And so while we talk about sodium most of the time, chloride's usually doing the same sort of thing. But sodium and potassium are the ones that we're going to talk about the most. Now, we've got a couple of different kinds of gradients when it comes to these ions. Okay. And so um, in lab, for the first week, we talked about different concentration gradients, or different gradients. And oftentimes, students just focus on a concentration gradient, which is very important. Okay, and so with a concentration gradient, we're just talking about, well, how much of an ion or substance is there on one side of the membrane compared to the other? Okay, and so if we've got a two concentration gradient, that's really what we're looking at. Now, with all gradients, things move from high to low. Okay, and so sodium goes from high concentration to low concentration. So if there's a, the ability for sodium to go into the cell, it will happen because there's more outside of the cell than inside. If I get, if the cell membrane becomes permeable or more permeable, then I'll have a lot of sodium going inside of that cell. Okay. 
but there's also an electrical gradient. Now, I've got a, a six-year-old son. Oh, actually, he just turned seven. So he's a seven-year-old son that loves trying to figure out how things work. And he likes playing with magnets. And we've all played with magnets. And you get to where you two sides will stick together. And then you'll take two sides and they'll repel each other. Well, when they stick together, what we're having is we're having these opposites attract. This is what's happening here. Whereas if they repel... It's either you've got two positive sides trying to, you're trying to put two positive sides together, you're trying to put two negative sides together. So as this relates to ions, positive ions like to hang with negative ions, think sodium and chloride, but positive ions and positive ions don't get along very well. Negative ions and negative ions don't get along very well. Okay, so sodium, well, we can worry about its concentration gradient. We can also worry about its electrical gradient. Okay, if there's a place that has a lot of negative charges, sodium is going to tend to go towards all those negative charges. Okay, but we could also, you know, if you combine this with the concentration gradient, it can be a little complicated. And so this leads us to our electrochemical gradient. And so that's based on not only the concentration, but the electrical gradient as well. Okay, and so what you see from this picture is we've got a lot of potassium inside the cell, okay, but there's a lot of negative charges. And so those negative charges are essentially holding on to that potassium, or at least slowing down um, how f the, the, the speed with which it leaves the cell, okay? So if we've got lots of potassium with lots of negative charges, potassium's likely to stay in, okay? But if we had a a big concentration gradient like we do normally we've got this chemical driving force okay which will cause potassium to leave but because we've got a lot of negatively charged ions and other things inside the cell we've got this electrical gradient that's actually causing potassium to go in okay now you'll never need to calculate or figure out is potassium going to leave the cell or enter the cell based on the electrical chemical gradient okay but I at least want you to be aware of that so generally for this class as we talk about things we're going to talk about that we're, we're going to focus on the chemical or yeah the chemical or concentration gradients ultimately when it comes to an electrical electrochemical gradient we just have to figure out or what what's happening is is the concentration gradient enough to overcome the electrical gradient or vice versa okay so this should say electrical here. I've been using this for three years and never noticed that. All right, so is the concentration gradient enough to overcome the electrical gradient? And this leads us to the last thing that we're going to talk about, which is membrane potential. Okay, so as we've talked, ions such as sodium, potassium, um, chloride, calcium, magnesium, uranium, think about it, it's got a charge. So they all have a charge. So membrane potential is the difference in charge between the inside and outside of the cell. Okay, and so what we do is we basically take the inside of the cell and we subtract that from the outside of the cell. Now, I'm not going to go through and figure out the charge on each of these, but let's just say on the inside that our charge, so if you add up all the positives and subtract all the negatives, let's just say it's 10. And let's say we do the same thing and it's 8 on the outside. Well, our membrane potential would be 10 minus 8 which equals 2 so we would say we have a membrane or membrane potential of plus 2 okay that's all that's going on with um membrane potential sorry i just don't like where that's that positive out all right so but let's just let's change it a little bit so let's say this is negative 10 and negative 8 so now we'd go negative 10 minus negative 8. Remember, and if you do this, at least this was the trick I was taught. So then my membrane potential would be negative 2. Okay, so it just depends on the sign. You have to keep the signs in order. All right, so if you've got a negative membrane potential, all that means is that the membrane potential inside the cell or the potential inside the cell is less than the potential outside the cell. If you've got a positive membrane potential that means it's the membrane potential is more positive outside than inside okay 
Um, it's important to know you can have a negative membrane potential even if there's positive charges, uh, net positive on both sides. It just would mean that the outside is more positive. And so we're going to end there for this one. On the next um, video, we're going to talk about how uh, membrane potential, what actually affects or sets the uh, typical resting potential in a neuron.